Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about partitioning in Postgres, how it can either kill performance or make it a lot better. Now we'll start off this blog post by Hans-Jürgen Schoenegg on the Cybertech blog. And in this post, Hans-Jürgen shows how you can get performance slowdowns by using partitioning. So partitioning isn't always a performance improvement. The test situation here is we have a simple table called T-Simple. And this table gets 10 million rows inserted into it. We also have an index on the integer column on that table. And then we run a vacuum analyze. Now we do a very simple lookup here. We're saying select star from the t-simple table where value is such and such. And we can see that we're getting a very straightforward query plan that uses that index in a bit of an index can fashion to get the result. Now, what if we change this to use partitioning instead? So here we use hash partitioning, which means that the value you're partitioning on, in this case, the ID column, gets hashed, and then you have a certain number of partitions that things get routed to. So in this case, we have eight partitions. Now, we do the same data load. Luckily, you can insert into the parent table, so you don't really need to think about the fact that there is partitions underneath it. And then we can create an index again, also on the parent table, that gets applied to all the subpartition tables. And we also run vacuum analyze. Note that this here runs a database wide vacuum analyze. Now, what we can see here is that we run explain analyze again, and you can obviously see that this query plan gets a lot more complicated, right? So you can see on the top here, there's an append node, which means that Postgres will take the results of multiple plan nodes and merge them together into one and then return that. Now you still get the same behavior underneath each of those, but you can see that ultimately, you know, even though it's are really fast queries, this second query is actually slightly slower. Now, what I would like to point out here, and which is also Hans Jürgen's point, is that if you look at the execution time, you can see 0 0.235 milliseconds execution time with 0 0.7 milliseconds planning time. So that means you spend more time planning the query than executing it. You can also see that during planning, Postgres had 100 pages that it worked with in shared buffers, which are essentially the metadata about the structure of the tables, like which columns they have and such. So this is something to be aware of if you're using partitioning heavily on a database you will be introducing more overhead because you have more planning to do. And in some extreme cases, either because of partitionings or because of having hundreds of indexes on a table, I've seen the planning time really be a problem. So it's something to watch out for and to be conscious of when you run explain analyze. Now, I want to talk about another case of somebody using partitioning to their benefit. So this is by the engineering team at ChartMogul. And what they're describing here is how they changed the tables partitioning scheme from list to hash. So they already had partition tables, but they were using list before, and they switched it to hash the same way that Hans Jürgen's post was referencing. Now, generally, the chart mogul's architecture looks like this. So they have multiple databases. They have an ingestion database, which this blog post mainly talks about. They have multiple data platform shards, and then they have an analytics database. And so in here, what you can see is that they've kind of had a few issues with their current setup specifically on the ingestion database. They had some IO problems, had some out of memory issues, and you know some overhead regarding how they manage these partitions. Because what they've done on their old partitioning scheme, they've actually done one partition per customer or per account. So they had a lot of partitions in that list partitioning scheme. Now, what they've decided is that instead of doing that, they're actually going to change from list to hash, and they'll have 30 partitions to essentially split up the data, but have it be roughly 2.5 gigabytes per each of these hash partitions. Now, this is a clear improvement if you imagine they probably have at least hundreds, if not thousands of customers. And so the more partitions you have, the more problematic the list partitioning scheme becomes. So here, changing to hash essentially means a huge reduction in number of tables, essentially sidestepping the exact overhead that Hans Jürgen talked about. Now, they've used database migration service in AWS for the migration, and you could probably implement something similar with logic replication in the new Postgres versions, but this was essentially something that you could do today if you're in AWS, just essentially migrate your own database in a way that is logical and is able to rewrite the partitioning. So the good news is they've essentially changed this architecture here, where they have split up some of the data into different shards, but then they've essentially combined these two databases using the hash partitioning scheme to make that most efficient. Their outcome of this is that they've seen a 5x improvement in simple select queries and the 3x improvement in select queries with joins just because they've improved this partitioning scheme. So it's always worth thinking about, especially if you have a lot of partitions, 
it's good to reduce them to keep them manageable in Postgres. Thank you so much for listening. This was 5 Minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week.